Hello, I'm Jamila Masaiva, an international social etiquette consultant and author of etiquette books, Etiquette, the least you need to know, and afternoon tea etiquette. If you would like to order my books, please make sure to email me at infojamilamasaiva.com. I'll link it also down in the description box. You'll receive all the information about how to order my books. If you are a new viewer on my channel, welcome. I'm delighted to see you here. On my channel, I talk about etiquette, soft skills, self-development. If you're interested in all of that, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back to my channel. I'm always happy to see you here. Today's video was actually suggested to me by one of my followers that I had the delight of meeting in person at my meet and greet event in Washington DC. She suggested that I do a video about how to look elegant and put together while working from home since especially these days a lot of us are doing a lot of work remotely and she still wanted to look elegant and feel elegant while doing so from home. So today's video is suggested by her. By the way, if you do have video suggestions please let me know in the comment section below. I always love reading your feedback. I also want to make the big announcement that together with the British Protocol Academy of London, I'll be co-hosting one week intensive program in London from November 21st until November 25th. This one week intensive program is called Etiquette for Professionals. The good news is that all the participants of this program will receive a CPD accredited certification from the British Protocol Academy of London. The number of participants for this particular program is limited to 15 people only and the registration is open now. I'll link it in the description box down below as well here on the screens you're going to see the registration link. Please make sure to apply now because it's first come first serve. The program is specifically designed to include all the main topics of etiquette that any given professional in any field might need to know. You can see the full program agenda on your screens right now. The program also includes very important guest speakers as well as museum outings. The best part of this program is that it's very much experience based and you'll get to experience together with me and other teachers from British Protocol Academy of London, afternoon tea ceremony, business lunch, finishing up with a very beautiful black tie gala dinner as well as a certification award ceremony. Get ready to not only speak about etiquette but to truly live and experience it together with me and British Protocol Academy of London. Please make sure to apply now and I cannot wait to meet you all in person in London this November. So now let's get started with today's video of how to look and feel elegant while working from home. Again, these are not rules. These are my personal tips and recommendations that I use in order to feel elegant while working from home. So first things first, I want to highlight that I'm someone who works mostly from home. So these tips have actually helped me find the balance of feeling like I'm working uh, and giving me that work mood and then transferring or changing my mood while still being at home into home mood. So again, I am someone who speaks from practice rather than just theory. The very first tip that has helped me is to start my day with a shower. I know this sounds like something given. We all shower every single day. We understand the importance of it from a hygienic point of view, but I'm not necessarily talking about the hygienic stance point of view because I'm someone who can hop into the shower three, four times a day, uh, even in winter time. The reason I do it is because when I get into the water, when I take shower, it helps relax my mind as well as my thoughts. And somehow the most interesting, the most creative ideas that I ever gotten always happen in the shower. I hop out of shower with a lot of new ideas that I want to work on. And so shower for me is not just about cleansing your body, but it's really about cleaning your thoughts and cleaning your mind and putting you into this very fresh conquer the world kind of a mood. The reason I point out that taking a shower first thing in the morning is important is because it helps you kick off start your day. It helps you immediately put yourself into this mindset that I'm about to start doing something. When you postpone this, especially when you're working from home, we tend to get into a shower during midday or closer to the evening because we are home, you know, we're going to be cooking. So why shower before it? I'm still have to, I'll still have to take a shower after cooking. So the kind of mentality I've adopted is 
I'll take a shower first thing in the morning and if necessary, if they're after cooking, after working out, I'll take another shower. So the first shower is important to just cleanse your mind and prepare you to get into the work mode. But also not just about preparing your mind, shower also helps you feel fresh from day one, from the morning on. And that also puts you into this mindset of being clean and being elegant and being proper. That's basically how it works for me. So I'm assuming it will also put you in the same kind of a mindset. I was watching this documentary on Tom Ford, who happens to be one of my favorite designers. I find him a very creative man. I find him super talented in everything that he does as a director, as a designer. And he confessed to taking three, four times uh, bath throughout the day. He takes two in the morning, one during the daytime and one before going to bed. And I thought to myself that if this is a man that has super packed schedule and gets a lot of things done um, at in one day given day and his way of coping with the stress and coping uh, with uh, the amount of work that he has to do is through bath, then why can't I take showers three, four times a day? So this is something that helps me and I am assuming it will also help you. The second tip that stems from the first one, once you have stepped out of a shower, start grooming yourself. Do not delay this process. Make sure that once you're out of a shower and your body is still a little bit wet from the shower, you can start applying your richest creams out there, especially if it's winter time and you need to nourish your skin. Working from home allows us to really pamper ourselves with this procedure because if you're working from office, you have to leave early, you don't have much time to let the cream or body lotion to dry and get absorbed to your skin because you have to get dressed really fast. When you work from home, you have this luxury of time of applying the richest body creams or face oils that you want to apply in order to hydrate and nourish your skin. Then the rest part of your morning routine, once you get into the habit of doing it, will take only to 15-20 minutes. While well, once you have applied the body cream and you're waiting for it to be absorbed, you can go on with everything you need to do on your face, brush your teeth, brush your hair, put on the eye cream, put on the face moisturizer, and then put on a deodorant, and that is the end of your grooming regime. If you get into the habit of timing yourself, of knowing what to do step by step, of having a certain routine, you're going to get into the habit of doing it and that will make you feel elegant and well prepared. The third tip is something that I personally am a huge advocate on because I find it very useful in helping me feel elegant and put together even at home. But it's also the tip that I've been most challenged by, uh, by my followers, by clients that I've met in person as to why I'm such a huge advocate of putting God putting on even minimal amount of makeup at home. Why is that I have to wear makeup even at home? What is this about makeup? I personally believe that makeup is a way to enhance your beauty and to make you feel good and powerful and elegant put together. So why not use this tool to your own advantage? I'm a huge believer in a good skincare. I do advocate for skincare. Skin prior to makeup is always my number one rule. But once you have taken care of your skin, it's also important to take care of your face and a little bit of decorating it, enhancing your, your strength, your strong features and perhaps disguising some of your weaknesses. Like for me personally, I have under eye bags that are quite dark. I don't like when I see my reflection like that in a mirror. So putting it a little bit of a concealer really uplifts my mood and makes me feel good about myself. When I'm challenged on the topic of minimal makeup, what is that I'm advocating for makeup, I always like to draw an example with dressing up. When we are out and about, we step out of our bed, we change from our pajamas into our loungewear. Or when we're about to go meet someone, we change from loungewear into a nice dress or a nice suit. So we're ready to change our outfit, to dress our body in order to look representable. But we also need to think about our face. Our face is also um, the part of the body that's visible to people around us, to people that we're meeting. It, it's a reflection in the mirror that we get to see the most. So why not just put a little bit of decoration or dress it up a little bit so it actually brings joy to you when you look at yourself in the mirror. For me, minimal makeup is anything that helps you enhance your strong features and perhaps helps you hide something that you don't like about, my, about yourself. So in my case, I put a concealer, a little bit of mascara, I brush my eyebrows, I'll apply a little bit of lip gloss because I tend to get really dry lips and that's pretty much the makeup I do when I'm just at home alone.
working remotely. The power of minimal makeup was actually taught to me, I guess involuntarily taught to me because it wasn't something that the woman talked about, but it's something that she embodied. I was a student in Washington DC and I remember uh, she invited us over to her house with my family. And it was the very first time that I met her and I thought she just looked like that because we were coming over as guests to her house. Over the years, I went to her house over and over again because she would just invite me uh, for a party, for a cup of tea. And I remember whenever I saw her at home, even when there was no one else, just me and her and her family members, she was always well-groomed. Her hair was well-brushed. She had minimal makeup on, some lipsticks, mascara, concealer, and she always looked very nicely and she even wore shoes at home, which is something I'm going to come a little bit later in this video talk about it a little bit more. And I remember I was struck by her looks in general, how well-prepared and elegant she even looked at home. This was a lady in her 70s and she actually went to a French school as a young girl and she has incorporated this habit of looking elegant and well-groomed even while being at home all alone by herself. The fourth tip of something that is again very personal to me that makes me feel elegant at home is putting on some perfume. I'm someone who is very into scents. As you can tell in all of my videos, I have a scented candle. I have a lot of incense sticks at home. I collect all kinds of candles and I'm very specific about the scent that I've been using for over 10 years now. By the way, if you haven't watched my perfume etiquette video, make sure to watch it. I talk about it in that video of why I keep it a secret. and this perfume really puts me into the mood of feeling like I'm stepping outside. Even though I'm not actually leaving the home, I'm working from home, it really puts me into the mindset that I'm about to step out to conquer the world. So putting a, a little bit of a perfume can really put you into this work mode into this really my, good mindset. Other things that I've also used in order to create this work mood while working from home is using essential oils, club eucalyptus, um, orange, uh, really gives you a lot of energy when you put a little bit of it. Sandalwood is really good. It helps me a lot. So I'll put on a little bit of uh, oil, oil in order to feel a certain way. And um, feeling elegant is something that is enhanced through smell for me. So when the home smells nice, when my work desk is smelling nice, I have this aura of elegance around me. I feel elegant in general. The fifth tip that is crucial, that is something that is a strict rule in our household for my children is distinguishing between loungewear and pajamas. Pajamas are not a loungewear and loungewear is not a pajama. Make sure that you have separate wardrobe for the two. Your pajamas are something that you put on when you go to bed to sleep in. This is just for bed and loungewear is something that you can wear once you've stepped out of your bed. So this is a rule that has helped me identify or distinguish my roles at home while working remotely from home, teaching from home. When I'm in bed, I have my pajamas on. Once I step out, I have a loungewear. And once I step out of that, I'm in front of a computer, I change into a dress, I change into a, a shirt and a skirt or jeans, depending on what kind of meetings I'm having that day. The importance of the clothes in helping us put into a certain mindset is very important. It should not be underestimated. It's interesting how in the movies, like if you watch uh, Superman, it's always when he puts on his suit, he changes his personality. It's actually very true to all of us. When we put a certain clothes on, we feel a certain way. When we dress up for Halloween, when we're dressing up a certain persona, we start exhibiting the characteristics of that persona. So when at home, remember to distinguish your wardrobe and your loungewear is something that you wear when you're lounging and not working. If you want to put yourself into a work mode, make sure that you change your clothes into something that will give you that mindset of working from home. Oftentimes when I share some of the videos on my Instagram stories about me working from home, I'm meeting a lot of clients over Zoom, I always wear a dress and I want to highlight that for me dress is not just about 
looking nice and elegant but it's also feeling comfortable i feel very comfortable in a dress and i try to choose the kind of a materials that are very soft on my skin very delicate so all i have to do is just slip on a dress that looks nice but also feels nice because oftentimes when we're at home we want to feel comfortable and not being restricted by fabric or by buttons so i opt for dresses that are loose and that i feel very good on my skin so when i dress into a change into a dress i actually not only feel elegant but i also feel comfortable tip number six and i think that's essential for understanding that homeware or loungewear doesn't mean it's recycled old clothes from your daily wardrobe make sure that you create a home wardrobe that is clean that is fitting that is not discolored that there aren't any stains on it that's not your old clothes that you used to wear for outings and now it just has stains on it or holes on it and now you've incorporated it into a homeware try to get rid of anything that has discoloration stains doesn't look like it's fitting you anymore get rid of that instead invest a little bit of money into doesn't have to be expensive clothes some general brands where you can find affordable things and get new things for your home wear and perhaps something that i'm going to say right now is going to go against sustainable fashion and investing in expensive pieces and using them for a really long time this is something that i advocate for pieces that you can serve you a long time and you don't have to clean them that often but homeware is something that gets stained a lot because you're cooking you're running around playing with kids doing all kind of work and so it's something that can get stained quite often you have to wash it often so for this kind of clothes i would even recommend going for something that's not expensive rather cheap so you can discard it easily without feeling guilty about it so things that we get to wash often are something that don't have to be expensive because with every wash that kind of clothes gets ruined uh, and you don't want to wear something that's already discolored and doesn't look like it's uh, the same shape that you bought it in the original version so for homeware i advocate that you get rid of everything that doesn't look fresh and instead create a new home wardrobe that could be recycled from season to season and that will always make you feel elegant and well prepared and well groomed tip number seven that i've promised i'll be talking about are shoes and the reason i want to highlight shoes as an important part of feeling elegant even at home is because when you don't wear the right kind of shoes you don't feel the right way your entire look could be very nice but if you have slippers on it's just going to ruin your whole feeling of how well prepared you feel for me wearing shoes at home when i'm doing a zoom call when i'm working is essential it puts me into the mindset of feeling ready feeling professional even when i'm working from home You've probably seen some of my videos on YouTube where I'm wearing flats or shoes at home, right? Like I'm doing right now. I make sure I clean all the bottoms of all the shoes after I worn them outside. I do it not only for myself, but also for the entire family. This is because sometimes we put on the shoes and then the kids are running around searching for their toy or their book or something. I want to make sure that they don't have to take off their shoes. They can actually keep them on and go to their room and search for something and quickly come back. So this is from hygienic point of view, but also it helps us to maintain the shoes for a really long time. If you're someone who is very much against wearing outdoor shoes at home, then what you can do is invest in a pair of shoes doesn't have to be expensive one with heels another flats that you can only wear at home it's great if you're entertaining guests even at home and you have this really beautiful dress on try them on with slippers and then change into flats see how overall your look changes and how overall presentable you are when you have flats or heels on rather than when you're wearing slippers so shoes is something that completes the entire look but it's also something that helps you feel a certain way so for me wearing shoes at home when i need to feel elegant when i'm working from home is essential the eighth and the final tip for today's video of how to feel elegant and well put together while working from home is ensuring that you designate a certain work spot for yourself at home this is something that i have done uh, ever since i've been working remotely from home is making sure that i designate a table i decorate it the way i want to i put on beautiful flowers i put on my favorite candle i make myself a cup of coffee i make sure i put my computer my notebook 
everything is well designed in that space, that space is clean, that space is clear, it smells good. So that little spot is where I do all the work. And creating that spot for myself puts me into this right mindset of feeling ready to work, ready to present myself to others. And that's something that has saved me a lot, especially since I have two children at home and it can get a little bit difficult to understand the line between where I'm working and where I'm at home. So designating a spot to work from home is essential to feeling a certain way about your work. But for someone who might argue, I don't have a lot of space at home and I cannot designate a certain spot as a workspace, what do I do? And my answer will be, though I do have a bigger space at home, I still don't have a particular spot that I've designated as my workstation. What I do is I use for the time being, let's say the dining table of my living room as my workstation. So the, when the kids are not home and it's morning, I decorate it. I put my favorite flower arrangement, I put my books, my candles, and I create this environment of work mode and I focus on my work at that table. When I leave the dining, dining table, I know I'm not working. I can take a break in the kitchen or do something else. When I come back to that table, I know I have to focus and it's work time. And when the kids come home, that dining table turns into a dinner table and it's no longer serving the purpose of my workstation. So you can also do that. You can designate a given spot at home for the time that's not being used for something else as your workstation. Put around all the things that puts you into this elegant mindset, into this work mindset and makes you feel good about yourself and start working from there. Thank you so much for watching this video until the very end. I hope that you enjoyed it and you found some useful tools and tips that you can apply in your daily life, especially if you're working from home, but even when you're not working from home, just generally feeling elegant at home. Please do let me know down in the comment section below what are some of your new video suggestions and I'll be more than happy to read about them, take notes on them and shoot new videos. Thank you and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.